And down we go. You like that music, Nathan? No, I really don't. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> I, it's, it's so just unpleasant. I, I really dislike it. Yeah, it doesn't sound like your type of music. No, it's like one string being played, one <laughs> string, and it sounds like it's something from a car show. And well, let us know if you like the music, and if you don't, we can always change it up. Well, guys, welcome to what car or <laughs> truck should I buy? And today we're going to be talking about the Bronco, specifically the baby Bronco, uh, because we know something about it. We have some tidbits of information about this vehicle. Now, first of all. Uh, in this episode, we are going to be answering a lot of your questions. Uh, we w definitely want to get to that, and so don't forget to post them here in comments. But what you guys should know, it's very important, is that there's a major difference between Bronco and Baby Bronco. It may not be called the Baby Bronco. In fact, we're almost positive it's not going to be called Baby Bronco. This is a vehicle that's based on the same platform as the Ford Escape. So keep that in mind. Keep that and we have that as a fact. I talked yeah. to the... Uh, guy in charge of the escape the lead engineer and i talked to the head marketing guy and they both basically confirmed that the baby bronco will be based on the escape so we yeah, know a lot about the escape too. yeah so yeah. we know a lot about the escape so we can make some really good and smart i think educated guesses so we'll go through that yes and then we'll talk about what we know about the big old bronco the one that you're all excited about yeah well you know the, see that's the thing i think a lot of people are actually excited about the baby bronco and when they see it yes if it's what i think it's going to be I am going to predict right here that it's going to outsell the Bronco about three to one. So, you know, we posted a picture of that on our website. Uh, it came from a dealer meeting, mm -hmm. uh, and Ford sent us a very um, pointed? Well, pointed letter saying, take that down or we will um, pursue legal action. And I figured, Nathan, if we didn't have the right picture, they wouldn't have sent us that letter, right? <laughs> right. And we're not, the, by the way, they were not the only ones to no. receive letters from Ford, by yeah. the way. So. Yeah. And, you know, we, we try to play by the rules, kind yeah. of. So, so I think that, that if you remember that picture, if you Google it, it's still, I mean, once it's on the Internet, it's on the it's Internet. It's pretty much there. Yeah, you could probably find it. We can't show it, but it basically looks squared off like a square uh, escape. That's the best thing I can say. No, I think it looks a little bit more I look kind of macho and out there and kind of off-roady. It's like a baby version of that rock uh, vehicle Bronco that was in the 8 movie, right? Kind of, sort, sort of, of, a little yeah. bit. Um, but there's a couple important things to notice about that vehicle. Large wheel arches, very flat, pretty good ground clearance. I'm thinking higher than 10 inches, which could, it looks it at least. You're all about 10 inches, aren't you? It's 10 inches or nothing. When Damn you're off-roading. When you're off-roading, that's, yeah, that's all or nothing. Um, it looks like it has some half-decent off-road tires. The thing is, is that it's not a question of whether or not it's going to be able to do basic off-roading. That's comparable to a Jeep Renegade slash Compass, which I think is on the lower end of what it competes against. And then on the higher end, I think it competes against the Jeep Cherokee, so right? Right in between the two. So Ford uh, Authority uh, is reporting that it's going to be called the Bronco Sport. I believe right. that. That sounds about right for Ford. Yeah, although there are other names that Ford has recently acquired or reacquired, including Scout, Adventure, and Maverick. So those are possible as well. So it could be the Bronco Maverick or Bronco Adventure, it might not even have the name Bronco in it. We, we don't know for sure. You know what it could be, Nathan? Huh? I think the model may be called Bronco Sport, because given Ford's history, they had the Explorer and then the smaller Explorer Sport, and then they morphed that to different models. But they could have, like, Adventure and Maverick as trims. For it the could Bronco, be the Adventure the trim, Bronco. the Maverick trim, and yeah. that, that's entirely possible. Hey, i got to give out a... a Quick uh, shout out to uh, our man uh, Dan Atkins, trucker Dan, right? Uh huh. Uh, and thank you, Vince Clark. I appreciate your uh, support from Canada. Have oh, well, thank you great so broadcast. much. Uh, Dan did a video for uh, Mr. Truck on his channel. Guys, be sure to check it out. It's basically talking about semi uh, truck tires. Uh, so you actually uh, looked uh, very professional in that video. I was surprised you cut your hair, Dan. You yeah, great. yeah, well done, Dan. Yeah, and and job, Mr. Man. Clark, once again, Thank you very much for your generous donation. Yay, Canada. Yay. Appreciate that very much. Um, Let's keep going on the baby Bronco, though. This is what we're talking about. Yes, indeed. So based on the Ford Escape uh, platform, which I drove, so uh, the Escape comes with uh, two likely engines right now. So I suspect the Bronco will as well. Yeah, which means that there's a possibility for a, a, a hybrid or even possibly a plug-in hybrid in the future. Yeah, we've got right now a 1.53 cylinder that puts out 181 horsepower, uh, and a two-liter four-cylinder with 250 horsepower paired to an eight-speed automatic, which, you know, the horsepower for an off-roader is fine, uh, but it's not crucial. Well, it, it, torque really is what matters, and also there's a question. 
what if it is indeed a plug-in hybrid? And then what if indeed it has uh, an electric motor powering the rear wheels? Now, we've played with that a little bit. In fact, Tommy took off-road a uh, Toyota RAV4 uh, hybrid, right? Yep. And that has basically power going to the rear wheels that only comes from an electric motor. And it did okay. I kind of look at it as the idea of having an electric motor power in the rear wheels is a really good thing, potentially, because you have maximum torque at zero RPM. So there's a lot of potential there, but nobody's really gone for it in terms of off-roading yeah, yet. I think you're giving it too much, you know, I think that's still down the road. Javier, by the way, says it looks like the Ford version of a Land Rover Defender. I think he's right about that. A little bit. Uh, and Stingray Z says that the leaked picture doesn't impress me. And here's one for you. Ethan Wood says, hey, Nathan, my four-year-old son and I watched TFL for a few years now and goes around for over a year and now says, Power Wagon don't care, but trying to do it in your voice. Why don't you do it in your voice? Power Wagon don't care. That's it. That's it. And thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate it. My son, who's 10 years old, doesn't do that. He doesn't do any of it. So when will it be unveiled? Um, okay, so here's the theory. Now, Ford was really quick to point out, because we assumed that the Bronco, the big guy, would come out at the LA Auto Show, which is coming up in about a month. And we actually reported that, and Ford called us and said, oh, no, you got that one wrong. They kind of yelled yeah. uh, a little bit. Yeah, so, so it's not coming out. It's LA. not. Unless they're, unless they're playing a double negative game of like you know super sneaky trying to outsmart us yeah they, they could be and it's not that hard to outsmart no, us trust not, me it's, it's not, really it's easy, not no. but there is a chance that instead of the big bronco it could be this baby bronco Maybe and it's a sneak attack it could be a sneak attack and actually it kind of makes a little bit of sense because why not whet everybody's appetite with the you know the smaller version that's a little bit more for everybody and then say, ah, tease this thing that can do off-roading, but it's really built for a little bit more of a specific audience. It's kind of like the same mentality of having a Renegade, but having a lot of people truly want the Jeep Wrangler, but not really buying it, right? Because if you look at the sales numbers, Renegades and Compass, if you combine them, they outsell the, the Wrangler. Well, that's because everybody wants a Jeep, but they really don't want a Jeep. You know what I mean? So, um you know, maybe unveiled in the first part of 2020 um, before the full-size Bronco. So we know that the Escape is already out basically in its regular gas version. Right. Uh, and its regular hybrid version. There's a plug-in hybrid that's coming in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ford's been having, uh, shall we say, um, <coughs> teething troubles with the Explorer. Um, you know, the news this week has been that they pretty much botched it. Uh, and uh, they have not been able to get the vehicle out to dealers. So I got to oh. figure that... Uh, they're probably uh, pretty caught up in putting out fires with the Explorer because that's their bread and butter. It's one of the, it, well, it is the most popular, uh, you know, full-size family crossover SUV in America, and they have not been able to get it to dealership. So I'm, I'm thinking that this may take a little bit of a back burner backseat to that Explorer. Or they're going to push it up to the front and try to <laughs> overshadow the problems they're having with the Explorer with Double this. down on it, huh? Why not? I mean, I mean, if you, you one of the things you want to do is create light where there's shade. And, you know, boom, look at this. We have a brand new vehicle for you guys. Forget about this other thing. We got this. I think that Ford is actually very smart by building this vehicle, by the way. A lot of people at first were debating the, the issue. I think it's actually a really bright idea because, look, the big Bronco, when it comes out, we know it's going to have a solid rear axle. We're almost positive on that because we've caught them testing in the wild. We know it's going to compete directly against the Wrangler. And we know that there's it's a really good chance that it's going to have a removable top and doors and windows and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it really is up there, but it is a truck-based vehicle. It's based on the Ford Ranger platform. That we know. We also know it's going to be built side-by-side -side with the Ranger at the plant. Yes, that we know. So it's going to have a lot of the Ranger components yeah, so as well. Let's talk about the regular Bronco. Let's go full-on Bronco now. Sure, let's go Bronco. <laughs> so we know it's not going to debut in L.A. this year. Uh, that's what we've heard from Ford, unless they're you know, doing a sneak attack. Uh, Rumors suggested it would appear next month. Ford said it wouldn't be a Bronco reveal. Uh, what it ends up being, I think, is a new Ford Mach 1 Mustang electric vehicle. That's what they're going to probably reveal. Uh, that's pretty Possibly. much been reported out there in L.A. And L.A. is, oh. by the way, coming up at the start of November. Hey, Ronald, thank you. I have some spy pictures of the new redesigned Nissan Rogue. What are you guys' thoughts? Frontier, any update? Great live stream. Uh, no, <laughs> people keep asking up the Frontier, but man, it's, they just, look, Nissan just unveiled the Titan and Titan XD. There's a video that me and Nathan did about it. Yep. It's going to be up on uh, this channel tomorrow, so check that out. They're not going to do anything with the Frontier because they want the spotlight on the Titan. So forget right. about the Frontier for now. So, so give it a few months, yeah. at the very least. They need to kind of re-inject some enthusiasm into the Titan before they even sent out the buzz 
on the new frontier. But we know it's coming, so there you go. Yeah, so let's keep talking about the Bronco. So Indeed. We, we also you know... You guys don't want to talk about the Nissan Rogue? Oh, <laughs> the Nissan Rogue. No, he said he had spy what, shots what, with the Nissan what, Rogue. What is oh, it? Does have... Send them to us. Info at TFL yeah. Car. Yeah, uh, care of Zach. And then put underline, Zach, you're the one who wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> what do we say about the Rogue? Well, there is a couple things. There's a rumor that they're going to get rid of the CVT, and the Rogue might be the first vehicle to have it. Uh, an all-new automatic transmission, that's a rumor. Another rumor is that they're going to have a new hybrid version of it. Once again, a rumor. Not a whole lot of information out there on it. The Rogue is one of their best-selling vehicles out there. In fact, Nissan combined with the Rogue and the Rogue Sport, I think they call it, if you combine those sales, they're way up there. They're on top five with uh, car sales. But it's a vehicle that, in our minds, competes on the lower end of all of the other vehicles it competes against, including the CRV and the Toyota RAV4. All right, back to the Bronco, dude. Uh, by Bronco. the way, hey, Chase, thanks for joining us. Uh, Chase is going to help us out with the project vehicle that we're doing, so I'm super excited. Hopefully next weekend you'll be doing a little bit of... Uh, All right, Chase, thank you. Yeah, a little bit of uh, painting of wheels for our new project Porsche. Oh, yeah, that. Nathan loves that. No, I don't mind it so much, as he, long as I don't have to work on it. <laughs> he was trying to pitch me today on uh, an Xterra. And okay. I said, yeah, you know what, guys? Write in and let Roman know how important it is for us to do a Project Xterra. No, I want to do a Project Cheap Jeep uh, uh, Grand Cherokee next year with the uh, ZJ. That's the one I want to do. It's that actually, that's a cool idea as well, yeah. though. Yeah, those I, are I, don't, I don't mind either Like 10 idea. years old now. But anyway, let's get back to the uh, Bronco. Body and frame construction, like the Ranger. We yep. know that. Uh, the Ranger, of course, comes with a power plant that's a 2.3 liter EcoBoost. Similar um, to the Mustang engine. Yes, 270 horsepower, 310 pound foot of torque, a 10 speed automatic transmission. It may have a manual. We're hearing rumors about a manual. I sincerely hope so. It may have 33 inch off road tires. Ranger uses uh, hand cooked Dyna Pro all terrains. Yeah, um, they may go to another level on that. We don't know for sure. Two Hand door is a par partner. Two door and four door, like the Wrangler, removable roof and doors. And patents suggest a lot of other unique touches. Like, for instance, Nathan, maybe a removable roll bar or sports bar. A sports bar that's removable, a roof that's removable. Even I'm hearing stories about a convertible style roof that may actually come with the vehicle. Look at that. Yeah, Bobby Murphy, thank you, because you guys are my boys. All right, Bobby, thank yep. you. Yeah, you join, you're, you're one of our uh, troop as well. Yes, thank I, you. I, I was going to say something else, and then I went to troop, but troop is a, isn't a bamboos a bunch of, isn't that a troop of baboons? Did I go the wrong word or anything? You're asking the ape of the room if the troop is a bunch of baboons. <laughs> is it, Zach? Is Zach? it the troop of baboons? Is it? I know about cars. <laughs> I don't really know about animals all that much. So who knows? Okay, so um, hey, hey, what if is, you what, can... What, what, what is it, ravens? Uh, it, it's like a gaggle of ravens. No, a, a, a somebody tell me what it's ravens. It's a crazy. gang. A gang. No, it's not a gang of ravens. Hey, because hey, uh, you guys are my boys, if you could recommend a used 2016 LR4 with 69... Uh, thousand miles on it. Would you recommend? Hell yeah, I'd buy a 2016 LR4 with 59,000 miles. I love the LR4. Have if, you seen our fleet lately? Yeah, it's all it's all, it's all, all British and German. <laughs> it's allied and Axis, well, right? Well, we have Toyota too. Yeah, we do have a Toyota. Yes, yes, we do. For now. And we have a Jeep. Yeah, we do have a Jeep. Yeah, so uh, before we get all German and allied Axis. But we do have a lot. How many German cars do we have? Uh, probably too many. Three. Yeah. And how many British? Two. two, yep. How many the American? Two. Well, if you count, I guess you yeah, count. Amer three American. The Tesla's American. So we have three American cars. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Tesla. Right. Yeah, right. So what, what, what is it, Ravens guy? Very good. Murder. Joseph Whiskey Beal says a murder of rape. I like gang better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's murder. I remember hearing that somewhere. Uh, so we've got some good news. I just talked to Andre. Uh huh. Now that we're, I think we're done with it. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about the baby Bronco? No, but we, we do need to address some questions at, in some point in time. You, yeah. we, will, we will get to the questions. So I got some good news. Uh, Ford just uh, called Andre, he, and I just called Andre, and he told me that we're getting the tremor as of November 1, hopefully. If all goes well, we should have a tremor in November 1. Now, we can't, unfortunately, uh, talk about driving impressions. That's no, it's, it's, it's held off for quite a while. Yeah, it's next embargoes year. Embargoes next year. Next year. But we can show it to you. We can crawl under it, in it, and show you every little bit and piece of it. And hopefully we'll be able to compare it against something... Very dear to my heart. Which is? Power wagon! Yeah, we're working yeah. on that. So, so we're working on uh, getting a power wagon and seeing which of the two uh, big boy trucks is going to be the best one off-road because we've got some 
exciting video is coming. Power Wagon versus Tremor, dude. I am super excited by that. Yep, yep, that's that's some good stuff. And there's some electric news as well. Should we tell them about the uh, electric thing we're going to be getting for a little while? Yeah, so, um, you know, we think that electric cars are actually happening. And so uh, we've reached out to all the manufacturers and asked them to supply us uh, with electric cars for Electric Car Monday. Uh, so you just did a video actually yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about for Monday for our Electric Car Monday series right. with the new Volvo. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're hopefully going to get a long-term uh, Volkswagen mm -hmm. right now, e Golf, e yeah. That we're going to see how it does. Uh, hopefully we're going to get uh, a Kia, mm -hmm. um, Kona, EV. Uh, I'm also, you know, trying to get uh, as many EVs as I can. So I'd love to get an e-tron. We haven't heard from those guys. Yeah, and Lotus hasn't returned my phone call. No, they haven't. It's returned crazy. My I just uh, maybe because I didn't call them. Uh, um, I, I tried to use it in a British voice, it didn't go very well. Um, thing is, is that uh, it, it would be really cool to have these vehicles and to see what they're like every day and commute with them and drive with them. In and, the snow. In the snow and, the cold. and in the cold, but yeah. also just, you know, in regular daily driving. And we're going to have some facilities to make that happen and make it happen efficiently. So I'm, I'm really excited about that, actually. Hey, uh, Nightwing Forces, I ask every time I donate, have you guys heard anything about a new Hemi for the Ram trucks? It was way past due falling behind the competition. You know that 5.7 liter Hemi's been around since uh, probably... Uh, Tommy was born. Yeah, it's been around. We have not heard anything about the 5.7. I don't think... I, I, are you reading some news somewhere that we're missing? No, no, but, but what he's curious about is because it's so old, you know, have they considered updating it? All right. Now, I, I haven't heard about the 5.7, but what I did hear is that they are considering developing more efficient engines. Does that mean that they're going to have hybrids or a better e-torque system? One would hope so. <laughs> I mean, their e-torque system is, has been proven to be eh. So they need to update that. Does it mean it's going to be hooked up to the 5.7? I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, we've got Ford and Chevy now coming out with new gas engines, right? And hybrids. And Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you'd think that, but my sense is that FCA has put a lot of time effort into the latest Eco Diesel, which, by the way, is now parked in front of our offices. Indeed it is. Yeah, so we'll have that. Tomorrow, me and Nathan are going to be crawling around the Eco Diesel versus the Chevy Silverado um, 6 straight six, so we're going to be doing that video as well. So we got a lot of truck news. And tell them what I did with the Ram Rebel Rouser. Should we tell them about sure. what happened to yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Tell them what I did. I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I, I'm a little scared because <laughs> this vehicle has to be driven from here off-road to SEMA next week. Yep, and it's at the shop right now because I, I broke it. I broke it. Ro I broke it big time. Roman pulled a Nathan, and <laughs> as he was off-roading, all of a sudden, bang! Yeah, you watched the video. It was a clanky sound. It was a terrible clanky and sound. And it was, it was uh, probably one of the scariest things I've done, Nathan, because we decided to do a series of videos, car versus truck. And the right. first one in that series was, what's better off-road, a car or a truck? It seems like a good idea, right? Snow's moving in. We still have no snow on Cliffhanger 2.0. So Tommy went up in the Turag. I went up in the Rebel uh, and got about two-thirds of the way <laughs> up to... Um, to uh, Razor Bend, which is a very hard obstacle, and Tommy really struggled in the Touareg to mm -hmm. make it up and over. Uh, and I went up, and all of a sudden there was a clang, and I started backing up, and next thing I knew, I had no front wheel drive. It was completely gone. So it's in the shop right now, and they're looking at it, and if we're really lucky, it's something that's a component, a module component can be replaced altogether. It's, 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 and, and, and the signs are very bad, Nathan, because the front drive shaft is not spinning, mm -hmm. which suggests that there's something in the transfer case that went kablooey. Maybe, right. maybe a belt, maybe a, a chain, not a, not a belt, a chain. Uh, but what followed, and this will be an interesting video that will probably get edited and put up this weekend, is I had to back up the Rebel all the way down cliff. And that is not easy, dude. It is terrifying because two things happened, right? First, I couldn't put my seatbelt on because it's such a steep hill. So yeah, no which seat is automakers. And when you're backing up, uh, you lose ABS. So basically the truck just follows the fall line. You have no ability to steer it going downhill backwards. It was, uh, it was from, terrifying. From the perspective that I saw the one component, Roman had the wheel all the way over so the tires are like this and he's just going backwards this way. So I'm glad it wasn't me. Um, I'm sure um, he had to change his underwear. And, and <laughs> more than once. More than once. <laughs> but when all is said and done, I'm still here. <laughs> no matter what, we have to get that truck to SEMA. And no matter what, it has to trek off road. Hey, Vince Clark says uh, Pixar didn't happen to, to Mark. I, think, I thought he was talking about, oh, he saw, he, Mark I said saw he saw a red tremor. tremor. Yeah, he saw a red tremor 250 on Sunday here in Los Angeles, parked down the street from me. So, oh. yeah, dude, Pixar never happened. I promise yeah. you there will be video of me uh, driving down uh, 
<laughs> then, uh, then yeah, that's going to be. Tony Chuck also said, uh, "Better that it break now than on the way to SEMA." Indeed, that's true. Now we will have a support vehicle. God forbid something happens along the way. And if we have to go two-wheel drive, we'll go two-wheel drive, man. It's going to go, and it's going to go off-road because it still has a locking rear diff. So that's awesome. It still has the power. It still has the lift and all that stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, it how, would be how, really how, nice. How do you think it would be going up Vail Pass in two-wheel drive? It's going to kind of suck, but <laughs> it'll snow. be. I've done it before. I've done the trucks with two-wheel drive. And you it's sure you're not going to need to pack an entire suitcase of underwear? No, it'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. I've done stupider okay. things. It's, it, it'll be completely all right. I'm not worried at all. Um, that's what drinking's for. All right, let's move on. There's, uh, yeah, let's answer some of these questions. You know, people keep sending us questions, and I keep replying to watch the show. So if you're watching the show because I reply to you, thank you. I suspect nobody does, but... Well, you never know. You never know, but I'm going to go for it anyway. So Alex emailed us, you guys should buy a trailer and make it into an overlander. I suggest an Airstream base camp X. So should we buy a trailer and make it into an overlander, dude? Yeah, but I don't know about an Airstream. I was thinking more along the lines of an inexpensive... Um, yeah... Those are really pricey. Trucker Dan says, hi guys, it's been a while since I made a video. Yeah, get us some more videos, Dan. Would love to see another one, Dan. Um, I, I was mean, thinking... Can you, take, can you even take an Airstream off-road? I mean, you well, can, a dirt road, but like, you know. Well, I mean, that one is built for a little bit more of a rugged thing. But the thing is, is that I was thinking about a tent trailer or something a little less expensive for us to get and lighter. The thing is, is that you're, you're worried about weight, right? I'm and worried about storing it. We have really, <laughs> we, we've done off-roading with trailers before. We've actually gone onto the Rubicon with the trailer before, way back when we did Motor Mountain USA four years ago. And I can tell you that having a proper off-road trailer, it really needs to be built from the ground up. You can add suspension and whatnot, but even that may not be enough. So I'm thinking maybe a tent trailer that doesn't cost too much off the bat would be a good start. You know how much one of those costs? Uh, I actually did yeah. look it up when I found 50, my photos. 40. 50. 40. It's not quite that bad. This mm. one in particular, this is the base camp X and it's 24 grand. Now it also weighs, I think Airstream said 2,500 pounds. Okay. Now consider that now it's kind of sort of like a toy hauler, right? You can open it up and move stuff out and then put a motorcycle in there, which is cool. But I'm not sleeping in there with Roman. <laughs> well, I'm not the period. With you, yeah. Look, period. Look, uh, you know, we're we're um, not yet to TFL trailer, so maybe we'll get and, there if and when we get there. Uh, right now, we we borrow them. That way, we don't have to store them. We don't have to pay for them. Right. So I think uh, a base camp trailer is way cool, uh, but probably not within our kind of audience. Not in our bandwidth right now, but yep. in the future, you never know. And remember, we are kind of moving around and migrating with different things that we do in terms of towing, so perhaps in the future. All right, uh, Seth sent us an email. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, when you guys rub elbows with Ford, will you suggest that they bring back the excursion and trim it out with the trimmer package like a 2020 Super Duty pickups? I want... I really want need to tow a vehicle toy hauler weekend wheeler that can carry my family of seven. He's got seven. That's a big seven. Show. Wow! Congratulations, dude. It needs to have a, a Tremor 250 chassis, drivetrain, solid axles, lockers, durable flying vinyl floor, and a comfy seat for eight or nine. So two things. Great idea. I'd love to see that. Yep. Uh, and why don't you just buy an excursion? Well, they're out there. He wants a new. He wants a new vehicle. Right, but they're out. Uh, this is uh, we had like, this long conversation with Zach today, right? We were talking about doing a video um, or perhaps a live show about you know cars that you guys wanted to bring back. And my response to that was, why don't you just go buy them? Yeah. And, and the problem is, it's like one of those forbidden fruit things, right? Where you could have bought it, you didn't buy it, and now it's a forbidden fruit, so now you want it. So for those of you who don't know, the Excursion was the bigger version. Yeah, built, the, on, the, the, built on the F250. F250 platform. Yeah. It's the biggest, um, actually, it's the biggest SUV Ford has ever built. And it was really built as a big tow vehicle. It had a diesel, also had a big V8 option. It was, it was, it was a time when Hummers were roaming the earth. Right. <laughs> in search of fuel. And unfortunately <laughs> for, uh, for Ford, it, it went right up to the big, fuel uh, the, the big crash and everything else. And right when that happened, people started screaming and yelling, these things get eight miles per gallon. What the hell are you doing building them? And it vanished overnight. And now people are buying them and using them as build rigs and making incredible trucks out of them. Uh, I agree with Roman. I mean, might as well just go out and buy one and build it up, and you'll probably save a couple thousand, several thousand dollars. But Ford right now has the Ford Excur Expedition, right. and it's known as the Elite. The, the giant, Max. So, Max. Sorry. The, the largest Expedition is the Max, and it's actually only five inches shorter right. than the old Excursion was. Mm -hmm. So that was another point I made is 
the reason Ford won't bring the excursion back is because the expedition is essentially what the excursion was. If you get the max. Yeah, and all the other like smaller SUVs have gotten bigger over the years. Like the Explorer is kind of where the expedition used to be. And then yeah. we have the Escape and the Echo Sport. Mo Motor so. City Max makes your point. He says you could buy an excursion and build it rock solid for 20K. You could. Oh, even but less than that, I think. I don't oh, know, yeah. man. They're, they're, they're pretty sought after. A nice excursion, I was just looking for them. They're mm -hmm. like 14 to, depending on, on which engine, right? So, because it, it had a terrible diesel. There was like two diesel. I think there was a 6, 7, and I don't know. I don't know my excursions. There was like a 6, 7, and a 7, and one of them is just god awful, and the other one is great. Yeah. And then it had a 10 cylinder, right? It had the old. The V10? The V10, yeah. That was I think the other there engine. There may have even been a the V8 gasser. version. Yeah. So, but, so, so they're not, they're, people want them. They're sought after. People like them. They're great tow rigs. Uh, why don't you just buy a Suburban, dude? It's the same thing. No, it's not. Suburban has a smaller frame. I mean, the, the thing about the Ford was that it was just a beast. To, yeah. And it out to A Suburban XL, those things are bloody big. This, is, this was bigger. Yeah. But yeah. Suburban no longer builds the heavy duty version. They haven't done that in years. So Ford, by doing this, kind of one upped General Motors, but only did it for a few years until everything fell apart with gas and prices and everything else. So, uh, bottom line is that right now, if you look at the tow ratings of the current expeditions, they're pretty good. Um, maybe that would be close to what you're looking for. And if not, then unfortunately, I mean, we'll talk to Ford, but uh, they don't really listen to us. I mean, it tows 9,100 pounds, right. which is one That's of the lot. best in class. Um, Matthew Emmerich points out that it does have independent rear suspension. The old excursion, of course, didn't. Right, there's a solid not, rear axle. And yeah, and the Expedition's not the same as this was. It's a good point. Some people are also suggesting put the big... Uh, the new Godzilla 7.3 gas V8 in the, in the uh, Expedition. That would be interesting. Also, another thing that you might want to consider is if they ever decide to put a diesel in there, which I think might happen. Uh, that would change everything around as well. So, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, I mean, we'll talk to Ford, and if they don't laugh at us, maybe they'll agree. I think the time when you know these giant uh, crossovers, SUVs roam the earth has come and gone. I don't, I don't see it coming back. I don't see Ford or Chevy and let's face it, those are the only two that would actually go there, right? Maybe, yeah. May, maybe FCA, maybe, but I, even they wouldn't go there, right? Well, there's still a lot of really big SUVs out there that are based on truck platforms. Toyota has one, Nissan has one, Ford, obviously General Motors. I mean, a lot of them still exist. The thing is, the, the larger version of those, the heavier ones, weight is the enemy, and they want better gas mileage, and that's, I think, what this all boils down to, better economy. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So last question, Anthony emailed us. I picked up a Volvo Cross Country Ocean Race about a month ago. I don't even know what that is, an ocean race. I anyway. got it up behind you. Oh, there you go. It's just like in a, a special oh, it's a nice trim. thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm trying to find snow tires to fit 20-inch wheels. You know what? Uh, with this new Porsche acquisition, um, snow tires are gettable in big wheel sizes, um, but off-road tires are not. <laughs> no. I'm really struggling to find off-road tires anything bigger than like a 19. Uh, but I'm having a bit of issue finding a set near where I live in Connecticut. So you can't find them in Connecticut. Any thoughts you guys would have? Could I get a set of those or what other snow tires would you recommend? We mostly have gone with Blizzaks of late, but also run KO2s on the Land Cruiser and Wrangler, which seem to be pretty decent in the snow. So um, that's a great question. We were just talking about this. So. Yeah, actually Pirelli, I think, builds a, a tire, a snow tire that's that size. Pirelli builds very big snow tires. And yeah. the Scorpions are actually really good. Me and Nathan just went on a program with them where we actually got to uh, sample their newest uh, off-road off tire. tires. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to break into the truck market. Uh, but... Um, you know, what would we recommend? You know, it, it really with that size of a wheel, it's what you can find. Yeah. I so think th there's only a handful of, obviously, which you obviously are having a problem with. Um, I think, you know, from last year's testing of the snow tires that we tested, right, mm -hmm. they were all really close to each other. It was, it was really hard, at least in our every, every day, every world, every man, every kind of testing we did to find a winner, right? Mm -hmm. We tried to do it real world where we went up and down Lake Skillet, which is the... Uh, um, Steepest road in the United States. Yeah, country uh, road. Country road. Yeah, and we, mm -hmm. and th there was not much between them. So I, I think if you get any snow tire, you're going to do well. And the magic number there, Nathan, is 44, as in 44 degrees. That, right. That's when snow tires come into their own. Right, that's when they become effective and the rubber actually starts working. Once you get higher than that temperature-wise, they start melting. They, they don't work as well. And progressively, the warmer they get, the less effective they are. So 
below 44 degrees, those tires work really good. Somebody's asking, does Mercedes offer tires, off-road tires on the G-Wagon? They use Scorpions. They use probably Scorpions, which are like an all-season. Mm. Um, they, don't, they don't have a dedicated. When we went off-road in the G-Wagon, they actually put on off-road tires, but mm. from the factory you get Scorpions. And I think you actually get Scorpion P something or other on the G63. Right. Which are even less off-road worthy. But anyway, so what we're thinking about doing this year for our uh, winter tire test is figuring out which AT tire is the best in the snow. And that is something that not many people are doing. So we're going to be going, you know, this is something new. And we're really excited about this prospect. Yeah, keep in mind, guys, you know, most all seasons are basically M and S rated, which right, means mud, and, mud snow. and snow, right? But uh, all terrain tires, some are snowflake worthy and some are not. So there's, they're all mud and snow tires, right? right? They're all M and S. But some have that little snowflake, which tells you that they actually have the right compound to work in the snow. So that's the tires we're looking for, and that's the tires we're hoping uh, to test. Yep, and that'll be in the near future. Alrighty, um, I think we're about ready to close it down, guys. Um, is anything we missed, Zach? I think we're good, guys. Yeah, you know, um, we should talk about what videos are coming up. Absolutely. Yeah, so tomorrow, uh, Nathan and I did an interesting Know You're Wrong about the new Titan. So if you love Nissan, we had a spirited conversation asking whether Nissan did enough. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve uh, is reviewing the new um, Kawasaki side-by-side -side on our off-road channel, so be sure to look at that. That's right. I think right. that one comes up tomorrow. Uh, and then on TFL Truck, we're going to have our uh, trip to Vegas on Thursday, I believe. So that's uh, probably flew us out to Vegas, and they had three um, vehicles. What were they for us to test? Uh, a Maserati Levante. That was cool. A Jeep Grand Cherokee, yep. and, of course, the Ford Raptor. Yep, that was really cool. So that one's going to go up on truck on Thursday. And then uh, on Wednesday on car, Tommy took uh, the Audi... Q3 and put it on the slip test and took it up rocky, uh, rocky top. Yeah, and it's not exactly a car I'd, I'd really expect to see off road, but it's pretty cool that Tommy did that. I, I'm actually kind of envious. Yep, all right, so uh, those are coming up. Uh, Racer X says, Can you recommend a good tire inflator, both 12 and 120 volt? <coughs> hmm. We did a review on that. It's, check out, we did a review of three tire inflators of uh, uh, basic budget ones the Amazon and the uh, Harbor Freight. It's a oh, really that's good, right. That's it's a really right. good, it's on TFL Off Road. Alex did that, so I would highly recommend you check that out. It's a really fun video. Um, Boney Chuck wants to know what Porsche did we get? We got the Cayenne. Yeah, what year? Uh, 2012. 12. With the locking rear differential, and we're going to turn it into an off-roader like we did with the Turag. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's what Chase is helping us with. we got to paint some tires. Actually, we've got to paint some wheels. Uh, we can paint some tires, too. That'd we're going kind of to plaster dip some wheels. Uh, orange. And then, um, yeah, I think that's all the news that, that we can share at this point. But there's a lot of trips coming up. There are in. Do you know where Tommy is at right now? Tommy's in Florida on the beach with a Mai Tai. No, Tommy's in Salt Lake. You're so far off. <laughs> Tommy's in Salt Lake City at the uh, Land Cruiser Museum Ooh. with a camera. Not quite what I was thinking. <laughs> so he's driving the new uh, Land Cruiser uh, Heritage Edition, uh -huh. which is a really cool kind of brown, you know, last of the current 200 series off-road tomorrow and right now he's doing a forbidden fruit video that'll be up on classic so if you want to see the uh, land cruisers that we don't get here in america that are here uh, be sure to check that out up on classics as soon as he gets it uploaded so he should be working on that right now all right guys uh thank you so much for joining well, us play us out with that great music that you love so uh, much i absolutely love it here we go here we go thank you dude maybe we should save this for what truck should i buy give it to andre you want, you want andre to have this yeah. I don't want him throwing himself off the building.